I'm Troy Kirby with MLT News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The Senate Health and Long-Term Care Committee held a public hearing on Senate Bill 5313 concerning health insurance discrimination. As an educator and provider of gender-affirming health care, barriers to accessing services unacceptably deemed as cosmetic or aesthetic is not practicing standard of care as laid out by professional associations, such as WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. The denial of these services results in further complications which could have been avoided had these services been covered. Studies have shown access to gender-affirming services improves quality of life scores and reduces the severity of gender dysphoria through validated scales. As a young trans person growing up in Snohomish County, I would never have imagined that I would have this opportunity to proudly ask you for protection under the law, which trans people desperately need. Um, this bill is important to me because I know firsthand how access to care can improve one's quality of life and because I believe my community is deserving of equal access to medically necessary health care. Health care plans signed in other on Senate Bill, Senate Bill 5313. Uh, certainly Washington's health plans support uh, our members receiving uh, the, the care they need when they need it. Um, I, it. It's my understanding that if there isn't, even if there isn't, even if there is an exclusion for some sorts of care, that if the care is deemed to be medically necessary, it's covered. So we're not sure that this is actually a coverage expansion, um, but we'd certainly be happy to work with the sponsor and others to, to try and figure out better how to meet those needs. I think it's also really important to note that a lot of this bill has to do with network adequacy requirements. And the one of the real barriers as far as network adequacy for these services goes, not a lot of providers, I think the previous testifier mentioned this, there's, there's a real lack of providers ready and willing to offer gender affirming services. So we're not, we're not sure that the network adequacy provisions in the bill would actually accomplish what the proponents would like. The UIC fully supports the language added to Title 48 and the goals to ensure access to gender affirming care. The legislation clarifies insurers' obligations regarding coverage of gender-affirming health care services. However, the OIC has some concerns regarding the provision in Chapter 4960, creating a private cause of action. The Attorney General's Office believes in ensuring the dignity of all members of our community. He strongly supports the right to access to health care, and he supports the trans members of all our communities, including individuals who work in the AG's office. On Wednesday, February 3rd, the House Government and Tribal Relations Committee heard testimony on House Bill 1361, which focuses on the timely mailing of ballots by county auditors. When we had the elections in November, there was a lot, I heard a lot of people complaining about voter confidence. So we work for the people of Washington State. So I started looking into it and Jason worked and worked and worked and we dug and dug and dug. We prepared a 60 page bill and I kept going through it line by line. And I came to RCW 29A4070 where it says this, failure to mail ballots as prescribed in this section does not by itself provide a basis for an election contest or other legal challenge to the results of a primary, general election, or special election. And I mean, I slammed on the brakes and you could hear the tire screeching. So this says that if someone, a county auditor fails to mail the ball ballots, no one can raise a contest against the, the elections and say, wait a second, you didn't even mail out the ballots. And now we're gonna count this election as being valid. Um, are you aware of places where people didn't get their ballots mailed to them? Because our county auditor sent ours out so early. I'm just curious, did it happen in places that ballots weren't mailed? I didn't have that specific complaint. I did have one person in the state of Washington contact me. This is about an incident that took place years ago to where the uh, county auditor is required by law to keep certain records of what happened in the uh, election process. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court. When they got to the Washington State Supreme Court, the county auditor's response when asked to reproduce those records as required by law, they simply replied, I can't. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by MLT News, covering the 2021 legislative session.